I'm Patrick V, and you're listening to Reimagining Leadership. My guest today is Justin Breen. He just published a new book called Epic Business, 30 Secrets to Build Your Business Exponentially and Give You the Freedom to Live the Life You Want. To me, what is so important in this book is that it's not a get-rich-quick book. That said, if you follow what he discusses in this book, it is a book that can make you rich. As it relates to some of the behaviors that I talk about quite often in the work that I do, two that stood out for me. One was around clear expectations, and the other was around being for others. And he talks about both of these as secrets that should be employed when growing your own business. And one is around being clear on the type of client that you want to take on and not straying from that. And secondly, around being for others, that it's about helping other people, that if we weight this more to the side of giving more than we're receiving, then we end up with much more than we need. There is an abundance mentality here. So let's get into it. Justin, I want to thank you for taking the time to be on the podcast. I've been looking forward to this, especially after going on your site and looking at the book that you have that's going to be published in the third week of May, I think May 19th, that it really is about, as you phrase it, your 30 secrets that you uncovered as you were developing your own successful business that you've had for about three years. And as I was thinking about that and the environment we're in, I thought maybe we could start off with what got you to the point of writing this book, the success of your company, and then go into really how I think this can probably help a lot of people today in this environment. Yeah, well, I really uh, appreciate you having me on the show. I'm so passionate about entrepreneurship and then connecting to people on a global, very high level. I could talk about this stuff all day. And I wrote this book in 43 days because it just came it just came flying out of me. There was no intention to write a book originally. Uh, I have about 40,000 followers on social media. So one day I'm like, oh, I'm just going to post the 30 things that I've learned from some of the top entrepreneurs in the world. And then those things that I've implemented into my company and why it's been an instant global success in, in less than three years. And so I posted that and like what happened was everybody's like, you have to write a book on this and people were printing out the list and bringing it to meetings and stuff. The way I am now is when enough high level people tell me to do something, I just do it. And so uh, signed with one of the top uh, micro publishers in the United States. She's out in California, Rebecca Greider. And then Signed with her in late November, wrote the book in, like I said, 43 days, and now it's out uh, May 19th, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, Chris Voss, who wrote Never Split the Difference, one of the top business books in the last you know, 20 years, he's yeah, doing certainly. it forward, and, and it's not just a book. Like it's, I definitely think it's going to help you know, thousands and thousands of people not only potentially start their own businesses, but figure out the right way of, of running their businesses currently if they just don't know how to make revenue or do what they love to do and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, it's good timing in a way, all that's happening right now, because I think a lot of businesses are going to wind up being more like the one I created in, in three years. Yeah, Justin, and there are probably a lot of people out there thinking, I can't do it. Justin can do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so what would be nice is for you to go back to 2017 and your decision to start your yep. own business and, and really sort of what was that like? And my guess is, were there ever points where, as you were doing this, you were saying to yourself, like, can I really, can I really do this? Wow. So yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, three years ago, very quick background. So February 10th, 2017, I was working full time as a journalist in Chicago. I had my job salary cut in half. I'm just due to cutbacks. There's nothing I had done. So next couple of weeks, I looked for a full time job. Couldn't find it. Uh, started uh, doing freelancing on the side while I was working full time. On April 16th, 2017, I decided to incorporate while still working full time. So no one knew I had a company yet. For the next six weeks, I reached out to 5,000 people to get my first five clients. So one in a thousand, 999 no's for each yes. So I got my uh, fifth client, resigned from my full time job the next day. And then a couple of days later, Robert Feeder, who's uh, one of the top media columnists in the Midwest, wrote that I had started my own business. So that's the long way of saying, to your point, most people won't be able to do this. They're not meant to be entrepreneurs, and that's fine. The ones who are meant to be entrepreneurs, if I can do this, then you can do it for sure. 
If you are willing to accept overwhelming amounts of failure and learn from it, to focus on only the positive things, to never give up, then you are capable of doing this. Um, I'm literally living the American dream right now, uh, working with only the best businesses and brands in the world. I only work with visionaries. I make as much money as I want to and have almost no overhead cost. So it's, it's absolutely possible. And honestly, like what's in my book is mil tens of millions, if not billions of dollars worth of advice. It's just basically a blueprint of how I did this. Yeah. You know what, Justin, you bring up a great point. And I think it's really important because a lot of, especially today, right? The buzzword is be an entrepreneur. And like, that's the thing that you're supposed to do. And if you don't, you <laughs> suck right. and you're right. And that's not the case, right? Not yeah. everybody has to do that no. to, to be happy. You can work for an organization and be very happy. And I think that's really important for people to recognize that this yeah. isn't, if you work for somebody else, you're, you know, because you're right. Some people, that's not their appetite. They don't want those things. So, I mean, you're a million percent right because um, to be an entrepreneur, you just have to have this certain mindset that is very, very rare. And then to be an entrepreneur like, like me, where it's, um, I'm a, I'm an oddball even for entrepreneurs. So I'll go into a room and talk like this to like 20 people or whatever business owners and 18 of them will look at me like I'm crazy or an alien or something. But those people aren't my focus. The focus are the one and two folks that are smiling year to year and they just totally get it. And so because of that, I have, you know, 40,000 of those people in my network all over the world. And these are the best people ever. They're total visionaries. They have abundance mentality. They invest heavily. They never ask, what do you charge or what do you cost? Because those people immediately go away in my network. That's an immediate bong. They're not going to be my clients if someone asks me that. So being intentional and very, 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 very strategic in terms of the types of people I want to work with, that's what's led to the, the company doing really well but you know it's to your point like it's as long as you do what you really love to do and what you're good at that's the the main secret that's the key um and that can be in anything i mean you can be doing anything and as long as you love to do it and you're good at it that's that's what's important to me yeah without question so fast forwarding today right <laughs> we're in this crazy vortex it seems mm -hmm. and i'm dealing with people at either that I've worked with in the past that have called to say, look, I'm, I lost my job. I'm trying to figure out what to do next. Um, mm -hmm. You have other people that have lost their job that say, I don't want to go back to into a corporate environment right now. I'd like to try and fund something on my own. And, and I think there's a, a larger percentage too, that we just know from engagement numbers that are probably thinking with everything that's going on right now, is this really, is this really what I want to be doing with the rest of my life? Yep. And I'm wondering, can you talk to, can we start to weave in now the, the 30 secrets? Like what are, mm -hmm. what do you say to people that are in this space right now that are yep. saying, you know what, I, I think I want to be an entrepreneur or I want to try and start my own thing. Yep. So there's three main things. Uh, one I kind of talked about already, but do what you love to do and what you're really good at. So my entire business model, which is based on me being a journalist for 20 years and being annoyed by PR firms for 20 years, um, Super simple. I love to do it and I never get tired of it. So my firm writes stories that are interesting and pitching it to media. And then I connect with people 95% of my day on a, on a global level. So it's my unique ability. I never get tired of it. It's endlessly invigorating for me. So it's never work. So that's number one. Two is when you start a business. And this is important, I think, especially right now is that uh, it takes two full years to really figure it out. It's not going to, I mean, in my opinion, and based on what I've seen and then the, the elite level people that I work with, it's not overnight type thing. It takes two full years, not two months, not six months, not a year, but like two full years to really, really figure the thing out uh, in terms of processes, in terms of the right networking groups, in terms of uh, your style, in terms of uh, price point, all that, all that kind of stuff. So then number three is uh, only work with people that look at things as investments, not costs. So I said it earlier, if someone asks, what do you cost or what do you charge? They're gone. I mean, that's, that's, they're immediately eliminated from being clients. And so those folks are toxic for two reasons. One, they'll make terrible clients based on my experience and again of others, because they're always going to be looking at things in a financial transactional way. And then second, they're going to introduce you to 
the people in their network and those people are also scarcity mentality cost mentality and uh and just not not good fits for at least for my brain and then the type of business that i'm running yeah and and again i think i know from my own business especially when i think of your second point there i think more about just patience and i think that can be really difficult and again i think we're an environment right where all we see is the flash at times if you go onto instagram it's the the lambos and the mansions and the people don't recognize i think the work that that goes in behind this stuff i mean yeah I, again so for my first five clients to reach out to 5000 people and i say those numbers just cuz it's easy 5 and 5000 but i'm sure it was more than 5000 people i mean i basically reached out to everyone on my social media network which is well over 10000 people but like again if you can't accept incredible ups and downs like severe depression i don't know one entrepreneur who hasn't been severely depressed at one time or another like this is not a path that to go down in my opinion it's just not it's not healthy at first for sure um it it's immense roller coaster ways of emotion like way like if you think corporate world is hard it's nothing. It is not, not even like the worst day of my corporate life was even close to the worst day of being an entrepreneur. And so the beauty of that is, is that um, as an entrepreneur, you can really learn from those failures and then learn how your brain works when, when you fail. And then realizing that you'll get through it and that you'll be way better person on the other side of things. So, so now in situations like this, where you know 97 percent of the u.s or the world is like shutting down and in panic mode like for me and then the people in my network it's just business as usual like this is just life as an entrepreneur and it's just pivoting and and capitalizing on this not only financially but then figuring out ways to help people so my business has never been busier in the, you know uh, in the last couple of weeks i've signed eight new clients because when you only work with visionaries and people that look at things in an abundant mentality then this is the this is what happens is like they don't they're not nervous about any of this they're just realizing this is a great abundant opportunity that again they can capitalize and then um and then really help people in a profound way in that process so again like it's all endless excitement from here on out. And it's only beginning in terms of this network that my company has, has built on a crazy high level. So again, a couple things here is that I'm thinking you start out, right? 5,000, you get five. Yep. So somebody that's just coming into this right now that is thinking, boy, I really could use maybe one of those six that are on the fringe because I need just a little bit of, I need a little bit of runway here to get going. Maybe it's not my ideal client right now, but I, I need some runway yep. and I'll, I'll get rid of them later. Absolutely. That's what I did for sure. Right. So, so you, totally agree. So at first, I mean, to think you're only going to work with visionaries and the best brands in the world and like all these amazing, I mean, that could happen. I've, I've been pretty lucky in terms of um, like Allstate was one of my first big clients with, within a couple months of starting. And um but for the most part, you're going to have to like, and it's good in a way, like you'll figure out the right types of people that you want to interact with, the right types of businesses. And then more importantly, the ones that you don't want to deal with, but you can't figure that out until you actually learn from that in terms of the right and the wrong things that, that fit for you and then don't fit for you. So absolutely. It's okay. It's definitely okay to have the wrong clients at first. In fact, I encourage that. Um, so you learn who you really, who your tribe is for sure. Yeah, I know for me, and certainly my business is certainly taking a hit right now based on mm -hmm. a lot of my work that I do from an, from a leadership standpoint, because a lot of it was in person. And really, it's created an environment where I've had to pivot myself. But again, looking at this of saying, where is this going to go? How can I take the problems that are out there right now and now create models and online and coaching mm -hmm. that's virtual that will address the real challenges that are coming up. And we talked about this before we started the episode in regards to re-entry and, and how challenging mm -hmm. that's, that is going to be. So again, it is about pivoting of saying, what's, what's the opportunity to serve in this crisis? I think that's what you have to do. Yeah. And if you don't, then you're just going to be left behind. So if this is, if people aren't going to change after this type of situation, then they're just not going to, they're not going to change. I mean, like this is, um, 
this is something that like, the, again, the only reason I started a company is because my job salary was cut in half. So, um, and I couldn't find a job. I look at these type of things in like the recession where so many people started amazing businesses or pivoted or came up with great ideas. The same thing is already happening here. And it's going to be amazing even a couple of weeks from now, a couple of months from now, all these great companies that, that start because of it. And the folks that re-enter into, you know, their, their regular jobs or what they had been doing before, I imagine there's going to be drastic, different, drastic differences in good ways in terms of how those jobs look. And the, the businesses that don't pivot or react to this in a productive way, like those businesses will just go away. I mean, that's just how life works. Um, so now's the time to like, again, capitalize that and look at this in a positive way yeah, I agree. To, to just change. It's okay. Like, I mean, a lot of these businesses that have been stuck in the mud forever, like higher education and, and I can consider like religion a business in this case. Cause like you can't go to church or temple anymore. So you better figure it out. Um, and in law and all these other things. So at healthcare, look at how healthcare is already pivoting. I have a ton of healthcare clients and it's really exciting to see what they're doing and uh, just signed with a big online education company. Cause they have, um, you know, all these courses that every college in the country could use. So it's like, it's those type of things that really excite me. It's, it's super cool actually. Yeah. You mentioned something, obviously you're talking about mindset when you talk about this and I, I that's the most important thing, but I'd be curious from your perspective, dial it back when, when, can you sort of look to your own past and say, that's when you really recognized that it was about mindset? Okay. Really good question. And I'm glad you asked that. So again, I, I said, when you start a business, it takes two full years. So at the two year point, I had weeded out all the nickel and dime networking groups. I had started to join groups like there's a, there's a provisors group, which is a national organization. And then I had just joined a group called Strategic Coach, which is an international entrepreneurial organization. Uh, it's around 10 grand a year uh, to be a part of it. It's only entrepreneurs. I, I meet uh, quarterly in Chicago. I'm the only one from Illinois in my group. Everybody else flies in. And so Strategic Coach has been such a blessing because it's really changed my mindset in terms of like understanding my value and my unique ability, which again is doing what you love to do and what you're good at. And then having a, like a minimum check, like if someone won't meet my minimum check requirements, then they won't become my client. Um, so, and then again, having constant daily abundant mentality and reinforcing that every single day, uh, it really does lead to you attracting those type of people. And now, again, 95% of my conversations now and 95% of my day is with all these global visionaries everywhere about all these great things that they're doing. So when you constantly talk to people like that, you just rise up with them. Um, and these are people running eight, nine, 10 figure businesses and they're just like the nicest people ever. So while my goal is not having a nine, 10 figure business, it is, creating this network on an insanely high level where it just keeps growing and growing. And, and, and that's already happened, but it's really just the beginning of it. You talk about staying in a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. Most that I talk to that are successful have some type of routine mm -hmm. that they start out with. Yes. What does that look like for you? So for the past 15 years, I've been running outside uh, six days a week, no matter the weather conditions. So blizzard, you know, negative 20 degrees or monsoon, 100 degrees, I will, I will run no matter what. That's been, a, and that's well before I started a business. So that's a key part of my routine. Good friend of mine who's also a client, his name is Joe Martin. He, um, he'd be a, good, a great guest for this, by the way. But he, um, so he names his years. And so I started doing that this year. So I've been calling it global growth well, well before COVID started happening. So I tell myself every day, global, global growth, global growth. And so uh, two of my last clients are in Toronto and uh, Guatemala. And uh, again, probably more than half of my conversations are with people outside the U.S. So you, when you keep reinforcing that and say it every day. And then you're part of organizations like I'm in EO, which is entrepreneurs organization that 
the network and that is insane. It's on, it's people who are really serious about growing their network on a global level. The EO is, it's just amazing. And it weeds out all the nonsense companies have to make between 250 K and a million, the group that the groups that I'm in, and most of these companies are way over a million. So, but again, when you just keep reinforcing that and saying it over and over and over and over again, it's, that's just what happens. And three years ago, when I'd start a business, if you'd said this kind of stuff, I would have thought you were insane, but it's totally, it's totally legit. So another one that's super important is building relationships is a lot like uh, farming. It's planting seeds and watching, waiting for those seeds to grow. Basically, I don't look at any meeting as a direct business opportunity. And basically I barely ever talk a bit about business when, when I meet with people, unless they directly ask, it's more about seeing if our brains mesh. I have this very weird, unique ability where someone, I could be talking to someone in Australia and they'll say something totally obscure and I'll know someone in British Columbia, Canada, who's very similar to them and I'll just introduce them. I don't know how that works. It's just, it just does. I don't write, write anything down, but it just, like, if you ask me to like build anything with my hands, I'll basically have a nervous breakdown. I can't do that. But, but this stuff, it's like really easy for me. So like when you plant these seeds, what I've seen is like the seeds that I, the, the, the relationships I built two, three years ago when I started the business. Now those people who I hadn't heard from in two years, they're reaching out to me now or they're connecting me with somebody who could potentially change my life. So if, if you look at things like that, where like all these conversations that you have now will be very beneficial to you a year or two years, three years, even longer, then that's the way of approaching it as opposed to, Ooh, I'm talking to this person trying to sell them something. That's just complete nonsense. And so when I first started, that's what I was doing. And the success rate was way lower because it's just, come off the wrong way and now it's more about building a real relationship as opposed to a transaction a real partnership justin you bring up a great point in regards to i think linkedin is has become this crappy environment for that where you get people will reach out about connecting with you and then a day later i get i get something some follow-up from them asking me to buy something i said there's no you haven't done anything right there's no value there that you've provided it's all BS. So yeah. I, so I have about 20,000 followers on LinkedIn and I use LinkedIn as a commercial for other people. So, and of those 20,000, 15,000 are probably CEOs, founders, like not the shysters that you're talking about. So like what I'll do with LinkedIn is like, so I'll talk to an amazing CEO who's uh, doing this awesome program or whatever. So I'll be like, oh, I had a great talk with so-and-so and tag them in it and then put a link to their program or whatever when it's, it's, it has nothing to do with me. I just like to showcase other people. And then like, if our, my clients, my firm's clients are in like the Chicago Tribune or the Boston Globe, I'll, you know, post thanks Boston Globe for picking up this story and then I'll tag my clients in it. So that give first mentality, it's uh, anecdotally led to, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in contracts for my firm. And then also all these amazing relationships that have been, created just like by tagging people in in posts and then they these all these amazing people get to see all the great things that these other folks are doing and then they want to reach out because again the most important thing is when you surround yourself with the people that have this forward thinking mentality and not the people that are trying to sell you something then it's just endless joy and connectivity so. yeah i think that's a great lesson whether it's a secret or a lesson in regards to what you've talked about in your own success right. is when you're thinking about others, when you're, when you're being for others, totally being for others, it has a way, I think, from the universe standpoint of coming back around. And that's right. not necessarily why we do it, but it's just, it's just the, it's like a law that it, it happens. And I am a firm believer in that. I met with this guy. So I've met two people since I've started this that have almost the exact same brain as me where it's like a super weird brain and they're able to connect dots in an insane. I mean, it was crazy. So one of the guys I met, he's the former head CEO of a giant insurance company, a crane in Chicago named him one of the most connected uh, people in Chicago. And they were able to quantify that by like, here's what his company was worth. And then here he's on like 30 boards across the world. And then, so they quantified how much those, 
boards are or how much those companies are worth. So it wasn't just like, oh, here's someone who's connected. Here's they're like, this is this someone who's connected to fifty billion dollars in whatever it is. So anyway, I was sitting at his house and just listening to him. And he actually introduced me to someone who wound up being a client because he was listening to what I was saying and I could see his like head spinning. And like, oh, stop the conversation, boom, let me call this guy in Canada, boom, boom, boom. And then two, three weeks later they were my client. But so he said something that was brilliant. He's like, I give 60 to get 40. I'm like, oh, that just summed it up. That summed up literally everything. You give 60 to get 40. And that's unfortunately not in the book because I, I met him after I wrote the thing. But like that, like, so that's, that's so when I write another book, that'll be in that because it's, it just makes perfect sense. You give 60 to get 40. Boom. Done. And we need, especially today, we need more 60 to 40s. Right. That's so how we're getting through this. Like, I'm more of like 90 to 10, which is fine. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. But when you go from an abundance mentality, you know that there's enough for everybody. I so, don't need to afford it. So here, here's how I'll dovetail that. So people ask me all the time, like, do you look at other PR firms as your competition or who's your competition? I go, I have no competition. I go, I am only looking for certain amounts of brains. And if they have the right brain or mentality, then they'll be my clients or my network. And if not, then they won't be. So I don't really, there's no competition. And not only is there no competition, but there's collaboration because my firm's model is so specific and I don't deviate from it. Meaning like, if you want to do this, then great. I have enough people that business is exploding. If you don't want to do it, I'll just introduce you to somebody else. I don't care. Like it doesn't. Yeah. It's, it's so that's, so again, when you're in these lower level groups or dealing with lower level mindsets, and that's what it is, it's a lower level mindset, then that's what it is. It's like competition. I'm trying to get everything for myself. And that's just, that's complete nonsense. There's so much business opportunity, even now. I mean, it's insane how much opportunity is out there right now. And if you have the right mindset, if you have the right mindset. So again, of the hundreds, thousands of people that are listening to this, this will sink in with maybe 5% at the most of people. And, yeah. but the ones that it does, they'll either, they'll reach out to me or reach out to you, or they'll be like, Oh, this is, this is a hundred percent right. This is what I, I should be doing. And then these people start their businesses or they'll enhance their own other businesses. And so like I was doing the, in another interview the other day, and the guy's like, aren't, aren't you trying to help everybody? I go, absolutely not. I can't help them. I can't. 95% of people aren't, cannot be helped by the stuff that I'm saying because they're not going to, they don't have that mindset and they're never going to, which is fine. But I'm concerned about the three to 5% of people who are really visionaries or have that in them. And they're just either they have it now or they're looking for the right push to, to get to that level. So that's, that's my you know, that's my target. And it's probably less than five. It's probably less than 3%. It's more like one or 2%. So, well, I will tell you personally, I'm looking forward to the book coming out because I promise you I will be reading this just because I think there's just in terms of you telling your story and me reading online, what, what you've done. I think there are certainly lessons that I know that I'll pick up. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Well, I appreciate that. And so like, here, here's my point. So one, I don't think we ever even named, <laughs> mentioned the name of the book, which is Epic Business, because that's what happens. Cause you just, and then I have my PR from his Brepic. Like that's my PR. So no, there's no, <laughs> I only mention it because like people might want to know what the hell I do, but it's like, it, it, this happens all the time. I talk to people and it, it never gets said like what the actual name is because it's so, it's not about that. It's about the, it's, it's about way bigger things than that. So if you get me talking about anything besides this, I'll like sit in the corner and be bored out of my mind. But this is like, these things are so important. They can help so many people. I'm like endlessly passionate about it. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm looking and obviously these things would be in the show notes anyways for people. Right. But I will tell you, <laughs> I am, I am. My name's Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny man because this is what ha i'm telling you every time no it never comes up unless I, I i feel like it's like not a shameless plug i'm just like bigger people who want to know what it's called so as i said i'm looking forward to reading it myself because i i think just in talking i think you're right right there's there is a percentage of individuals that will take this and find a way to apply it and the rest will won't either purchase it in the first place or will say that's not me i can't do that that's right. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, Cause I'm not trying to help everybody. 
I don't see the point of that because it's not, it, um, again, the number one reason why my company is successful is I'm so focused on doing what I love to do and what I'm good at and then working with only people who understand that. And so if you don't, then that's fine. There's other things out there to do. But the ones that do get it, those people, they're like a drug for me. It's the intoxicating hanging out with those people and then watching that network grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Well, listen, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to speak with me and talk about your book and the 30 secrets. And again, that will be out for everybody to, uh, to be able to go to that link. And I'm looking forward to reading it myself. It's going to be a great read. Really excited. So and uh, and, and uh, thanks so much for having me on. I know this book's definitely going to change people's lives for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. I will tell you, I'm looking forward to reading Justin's book. I just picked it up on Kindle today as it just went out. And I know that there are things that I will be able to take away from this and you will too. If you know somebody that would benefit from this episode, I'd ask you to forward it on to them. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And it would mean the world to me if you would leave a rating or a comment, because that's how this message continues to spread. And we really are focused on reimagining what it means to lead because the world needs leaders. And until the next episode, I hope you're able to go out there and rise above your best.